What's going on guys, Clint here. Welcome back to the channel, Code Commerce. And in this video, we're gonna be building this JavaScript stopwatch that you see here running. I've already started it. You can stop it, we can start it again, we can stop it, we can even reset it. So if you wanna see how I built this from start to finish, then let's go ahead and get started. So here I am in VS Code, and I'm already in the working directory that I want to be in, just a folder by the name of js-stopwatch. So let's go ahead and create an index HTML file. Now I'm not going to have an external uh, style sheet or an external script file. I'm going to do all of this inside of my HTML file. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and let's open this with the extension live server so we can see the live uh, previews as we type. So here we are. You can see our new, our new window tab here with the title of document. So let's just go ahead and change that to, we'll say a stopwatch just like so. Perfect. Now, what I want to do, let's go ahead and start off with our HTML. Okay. So for our HTML, let's give us some space here. What we're going to have, I'm going to create a div with a class of container. And what I'm doing here, I can just use, it's kind of like a shorthand. What you can do to create a new div with a class, you can use a period for the, for the class, or if you want to create an ID, you can do something like that as well. So I'm all about saving time and writing out these shortcuts here. So in case you didn't know, that's a big time saver there. So I'm going to give this an H1 of stopwatch. Okay. Now under the stopwatch i'm gonna have a p tag and let's give it a class of time just like that all right now inside this p tag let's create a span with an id so i'm gonna say span and then give it an id of minutes just like so and we're gonna say minutes zero now next what we're gonna want is a span with an id of our seconds there we go and we'll say seconds there and we also want to do span and we'll just call this tens just like so okay let's go ahead and save that and oh i'm gonna get rid of these spaces here there we go that's looking better okay perfect so that is what we want right there you guys now um underneath this p tag let's go ahead and create our buttons so i'm gonna have a button with an id of start and i'm just gonna say start and let's just copy that down so we have a start we have a stop and then we need to have a reset button. So reset, just like that. So let's go ahead and save that. It gets nice and formatted. That is what we want to see right there. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to go ahead and add in the, the style here. So like I said, I'm just going to paste it in here, you guys. Um, and I'll, I'm going to, this is what this is what our finished product is going to look like. Of course, it doesn't work yet. We haven't added any JavaScript. And you guys, if you want to, I'm going to put a link to the GitHub down in the description below. So feel free to just uh, to clone it or just copy over the styling uh, if you want to save some time on that. But basically, we have uh, applying to all uh, margin set to zero, padding set to zero, bodies 100% width, 100% viewport height. Um, this is our background image from Unsplash. And it is uh, fluid with a screen, as you can see. So that's what we're doing there. And then also we have a um, line items to the center, justify content to the center and see padding. This is our container here. We have a little overlay with some padding and then a little hover effect. So um, yeah, so hopefully you understand all that. So let's go, let's go ahead and, and uh, get started on the, um, on the JavaScript side. So, okay. So, and like I said, we're going to write all of this inside of our HTML file. So let's just go right below the body down here and I'm going to create a, Script tag, just like so. So in here, what we're gonna say is window dot on load, just like that. And inside here, what we're gonna have is a function. And we're gonna put everything inside of this function. And what the window dot on load is basically it's when whenever the window loads, it's gonna trigger trigger this function. So pretty self-explanatory there. So what we want to do first is we're gonna have our uh, create our variables. So we're gonna have let we're gonna say let minutes equal to zero. Okay. We're gonna have our seconds equal to zero. We're gonna have our tens equal to two zeros because those actually count up to uh, 99, right? Okay. So next we want to have a way to, we need some query selectors and how we're going to select our, um, our IDs here. So our start, our stop, then of course our minutes, uh, seconds and, and tens there. So what we're going to say, we'll say, um, let append minutes just like so. And that's going to be equal to document dot query selector. And what we're selecting is the minutes, just like that. Let's just copy that down. So instead of minutes here, of course, we want to select the tens. We'll change that here. And then next, we want to grab the seconds. Just like that. Okay, perfect. Now we also need to do the same thing for our buttons. Okay, so for our buttons, we'll do the same. We'll say let start btn 
because this is our, and we're going to grab it by the ID of start. Okay. So again, we'll say document dot query selector. And again, we want to grab this by the ID of start. Okay. And let's just copy that down again. So st we have the start button and we have the stop button BTN. And this one, we're grabbing it by the ID of stop. And again, here we're going to have the reset BTN there. And that one has an ID of reset. So let's go ahead and save that. Perfect. So now we have, that is all of our query selectors. We have all our variables set. Everything is looking good. So we, we are going to use the interval here. So we'll say let interval and the interval is a function we can call and it basically just takes in two arguments or uh, it could take in one or two or more even but what we're going to pass in is um, a little bit of code and also a the delay that we want to set on here so let's go ahead and get started with our uh we're going to set a start timer function so we can actually start uh, counting there okay so we'll say let's start our okay we'll say start timer function here so we'll say start timer just like that it's going to be an arrow function now in here let's scroll up so you guys can see what we want to do in our start timer so when we start a timer we want to increment the tens by one so let's go ahead and say tens plus plus just like so or you could say you know tens plus one but tens plus plus just looks a lot cleaner and then in here what we want to say is if tens is less than or equal to nine okay then we want to append the tens on the screen so we'll say append tens dot enter html equal to a zero. Whoa, what's going on there? Enter. Well, sorry about that. What we'll say is append tens. There we go. Dot enter HTML equal to zero plus tens. Okay. Since our, our tens we have um, are going up to 100, what we want to do is just increment this right side. If it's less than or equal to nine, then once it hits 10, so what we can say if tens is is a greater than nine, then what we want to say is append tens. Dot enter HTML equal to just the tens. Okay. So next, what we want to do, so I just had a little power outage here, a power flicker here. I'm not sure if I'm still recording. Hopefully that took, so sorry about that, you guys. Hopefully just everything kind of flickered at the house. So hopefully we're still recording. If not, I'll just go back. So, um, Okay, so now we have, sorry, it threw me off there. Oh, now we have their tens. So if the tens gets above, like I said, these count to 99. So we'll say if tens is greater than 99, okay, they want to increment the seconds by once. So we can just say seconds plus plus. Then we want to show this on the screen. We'll say append seconds dot enter HTML equal to zero plus the seconds there, right? And if this, and then we'll say, let's see here, we'll say tens equal to zero. Cause of course, when we get to 99, we need to reset the tens back to zero. And then we want to show that on the screen, we'll say append tens dot enter HTML equal to zero plus zero. So let's go ahead and save that. Gets nice and formatted. Perfect. So now let's check the seconds. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and change the seconds here. So if the seconds here, we'll say if seconds is a greater than nine, then what we're going to do is append seconds enter HTML equal to seconds. There we go. Let me scroll down a little bit. Now we'll say if seconds is greater than 59, then what we want to do is increment the minutes by one. So we'll say minutes plus plus, and we can say append minutes enter HTML. So we can actually see some changes on the Dom here, we'll say zero plus minutes, then just kind of like what we did above here, we can also just say, we want to say change seconds to zero. And then we'll say append seconds dot enter HTML equal to zero plus zero. So let's go ahead and save that. Now, uh, nothing works yet because we haven't actually hooked up any of our buttons or anything like that. So let's go ahead and start with our um, with our start button. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. We'll do it right here. Give ourselves a little bit of room. So for our start button, and you guys, we already have our, so we have our button here with the ID of start. Down here, we have our document, a query selector of start. So we have our variable start button. So that's what we're gonna be using right there. So what we can say is start btn, okay. We'll say on click, we're gonna run this function. And what this function is gonna say, we're gonna say clear interval, we'll set that to 
interval, just like so. And then our interval is going to be equal to set interval. And this can take in uh, a couple arguments, could take in more, could take in less. For this, we're going to take in the start timer and then just the 10, just like there. So let's go ahead and save that and let's start it and see. And it's not working. What is going on here? So let's see. Start on click, clear interval. Oh, there we go. Fix that. Let's see. Now we should be able to start counting. There we go. Okay, you guys, smash like button. We're able to start counting here. Perfect. So next, what we want to do, let's go ahead and add, we can't stop it yet. So let's go ahead, add the stop and also the reset functionality. Okay. So just under here, what we're going to say is stop btn dot on click just like that. Okay. And in here, what we're going to say is clear interval, just set that back to the interval. Okay. So now we should be able to stop this thing. And of course we can resume and I hope this makes sense, you guys, on the counting here, um, just above here with, with all the, you know, a pin seconds, a pin tens, and, and the minutes here in the inner HTML. I hope that uh, made sense, you guys. If it didn't, leave me a comment down below, and, and I'll try and work on that or clarify. So next, we need a way to reset this thing. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So just under here, we'll say uh, our reset, reset BTN, right? That's how we're um, grabbed a hold of that button with the, our query selector. And we'll say on click and on click, we're going to run this function here. And this function is going to do a few things. So first of all, first of all, it's going to say clear interval. Okay. We're going to pass in the interval. So next we want to reset all of our, all of our things back to zero. We want to reset the, the, the minutes, the, the seconds and the tens back to zero. So what we can say, we'll say tens equal to zero. Okay. We want the, the uh, seconds set to zero and we want the minutes set to zero okay and then we actually need to reflect this on the screen because right now um they would actually be be set back to zero but it would not reflect it on the screen so as, I, as you can see in fact if we stop it when we reset it it is now set back to zero but it is not yet reflected on the screen. So when we press start, it's actually gonna start back over from, um, it should just start back over. So let's go ahead and, and add this in right now. So we'll say append tens dot enter HTML equal to tens. And we'll say append seconds. We'll say append seconds dot enter HTML equal to seconds. And then the append Dang, what's going on there with me? We'll say, okay, append minutes dot enter HTML equal to minutes. So let's go ahead and save that, you guys. S start it there, and we should be able to stop, and we can resume, and hopefully we can reset. There you go, back to zero. So there you have it, you guys, a fully functional stopwatch and good old plain vanilla JavaScript. If you want to take it upon yourself to add in, um, you could up the count to hours, to days, or even weeks. Not sure why you'd want to go that high, but you know, it's, it's always good to, to, to help your learning just kind of be like expanding upon, upon projects that you build. So hope you got some value out of this. You guys smash the like button. If you, if you did leave me a comment and I will see you on the next one.